everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out of the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. Welcome to the show. How's that studio? Uh, you look a little freezy over there, buddy, in San Francisco. Jay JP, the Deeb studio uh, could pass for a walk-in refrigerator. You could store beer and raw meat in here because it's that damn cold. Holy Both God, it's freezing. sound pretty good if you ask yeah. me. I'm wearing this fuzzy hat. I don't know why I'm actually, uh, it's actually kind of hot in here in the studio in Las Vegas. You're it's not particularly oh hot, uh, but we got lots of windows. Have you ever, th it's kind of sucks. I got to get it sorted out. Because we have windows everywhere. The light keeps changing in the morning, so yeah. like the level goes up and down. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, who cares about all that stuff? You're here to find out about the most interesting car of the day. That's what we do That's right. on this channel. We scour all the auction sites like BAT, Cars and Vids, P-Car Market, and more. We find the most interesting car of the day. It may not be the most expensive. It may not be the most rare, but it is the most interesting because we think it's going to spark the most interesting conversation. We have that conversation. We talk about that car, why we think it's interesting. Interesting. And then we do the interesting part, which is to make a prediction as to what's going to happen with that car's auction. What will be the results? Uh, and then at the end of the show, we reconcile our bids, our predictions with the actual results of the car's auction. So stick around to the end and find out how wrong we are. We are always wrong. Never take our advice unless you're listening to Michael Deeb talk about our great sponsor, God and Porsche. What about those guys? Call our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. They have all the expertise, all the parts, all the services, and occasionally the whole cars when it comes to classic Porsches and classic parts for your Porsches from Porsche that they keep sourcing all over the world to bring you all the original parts. Call our friends at God and Porsche. Tell them the bid nerd sent you. That is correct. All right. So uh, today's car is interesting. You know, I... I mean, obviously, it's the most interesting, right? Uh, but I, it's uh, I, the interesting thing to me is that I've had one. I've owned this exact car. Is that why you picked it, Michael Deep? Um, you know, every time I see a black Porsche that um, is open air, I immediately assume you own that car because <laughs> it's it, this is this ticks every JP box there is. It's an SC. It's a Targa. It's black. It's air cooled. Um, and it needs to be lowered, which is exactly the way you like your cars. <laughs> Give it the demon drop. Uh, John, on Bring a Trailer, a 1982 Porsche 911 SC Targa showing just 9,000 miles out of, out of Village of Pinecrest, Florida. Um, interesting, too, because you just mentioned before we went on the air, you're like, oh, car out of Florida. And I started laughing. Um, we make fun of cars that come out of Florida and people that buy cars out of Florida and people who sell cars out of Florida all the time. Um, and for no good reason and sometimes a lot of good reasons. But I'm realizing that I have this Alfa Romeo that I bought last year that is still in the shop. And I bought that car out of Florida. So I'm starting to regret not taking our own advice, <laughs> even though we tell people not to listen to us. JP, this car looks to be really nice. Um, there is some small discrepancy with the mileage as far as what's on the odometer versus what's on the Carfax versus what's on the title out of Massachusetts. But we're talking like a hundred mile discrepancy. So it's probably just a clerical error. It, I don't think it's anything that's going to prevent a value uh, being found, an authentic value being found for this really nice preserved uh, triple black SC Targa. There's not a lot to talk about here in that it's not like a crazy option car or a rare model. Um, but it really does tick all the boxes and you don't see them with low miles like this very often. Now we did a lot of hoopla over a gold SC coupe that was being sold by road scholars on BAT. And we all thought it was going to do like 130, 150 grand or whatever. Um, and that car kind of fizzled out. I can't remember John at like 80 or hundred thousand dollars. It didn't go very far. So I wonder as this car has arguably less miles than that car did, um, and it's a prettier colorway, a more attractive and certainly a colorway with a broader appeal. You know, does this car stand the chance to be a six figure or higher car? Um, that would really be something because usually coupes bring more money than Targas and then uh, more money than convertibles. Uh, and I do recognize that in 82, you could only get a Targa or a coupe. There wasn't a convertible yet. I think, Jan, you taught me that that only showed up in 83. Um, but anyway, I send this back to you. I'm not surprised that you've owned one like this, um, but what do you think of this car as we look at it? The pictures really don't do much. The listing itself is kind of drab and blah, 
Um, but what we're looking at here is is kind of a kind of a it's sort of a small big deal. Would you not agree? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, look, I love the car. Clearly, I've owned, you know, I mean, you and I have both owned multiple 911s. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so I had one that looked identical to this one um, yeah. in, in, and I sold it, like, right at, like, we're talking 2020, right when everything was getting, you know, shut down and everything like that. Uh, it was probably, yeah. like, two or three weeks into all that nonsense. And uh, I only got, like, 29,000 bucks for it. <laughs> you know, now keep in mind, mine was how many yeah. miles does this one have on it again? 9,000. Yeah. Now mine had way more than 9,000. Like it had, you know, more like 159,000 miles on it, but it yeah. was in good shape. I had just, you know, read, redone the chain tensioners and a bunch of stuff like that. So, you know, and, and the other thing that I did is like you said, I lowered it. I changed the sugar scoops to H fours, but even, yeah. but it was just a great looking, great driving. It was just the perfect kind of all around what SCs used to be. They used to be the value nine eleven. You want the nine eleven look, you want the nine eleven performance. You want that air cooled experience. Well, go out and spend 30,000 bucks and uh, you can have <laughs> that, right? Well, right. now that same car, the, the one that I have, had not this one would easily bring you know 40 maybe even fifty thousand dollars it's ridiculous it might even get more than that i mean you're looking at something like this car that has really really low miles and you're talking six figures for scs six figures for scs happen um now we are and you know i i'm a broken drum i constantly talk about how inflation <laughs> is real uh, broken drum broken record is what i meant to say i'm an idiot too uh <laughs> i think i think you are a broken drum i'm broken drum and, and, i just keep beating just, the same bro mixing my metaphor I, sorry i need to ask a question that everybody who's watching this episode is asking themselves right now did you change your hat since we went live <laughs> i did i've yeah, I yeah got okay all right just check it yeah all right just checking because i'm sure everybody's going wait a minute he started the show with a knit hat now he's wearing a rami show cap plug in our Blade friends over at the rami show our sister Blade channel Brandy. go check out yeah. uh check out the <laughs> Rami show guys um no look this these scs are have are now worth the same as carrera's you know 3.2 yeah. meters and and even i mean 964 money i mean a six now granted this car has the possibility of getting up in the six figures if it were a 964 with this few miles it would be you know, probably a buck and a half or something like that. Oh yeah. But you know, normal mileage nine six fours are are in that six figure range. Nine nine threes with low miles are in the same price range. I mean, how did SCs wind up in the same place as all those other cars? And it's not. You can't just say it's inflation. Yeah, I I, I don't know. It's not just inflation. I just think. Um, and look, this is a really broad stroke. What I'm going to say, but like, if you start to say. You know, a lot of the really good 3.2 Carreras, whether they've got, you know, the, the 915 box or the G50 box, which are arguably, you know, a small premium higher. If a lot of the good ones start to evaporate because the collectors are snapping them up and, and, and even the, some of the rougher ones are being taken out of the marketplace because somebody wants to make it a project car and, you know, do a little rotisserie rotisseration in their own garage over the next nine years or whatever that is, you start to look that the value is in SCs. Well, as SC start to get gobbled up and there's fewer of them on the market, then when a nice one shows up, it starts to bring people start to pay a premium for it because because inventory is drying up. And certainly, I think you would agree, John, that when the, when the federal government started printing money during COVID, um, you know, there was like a feeding frenzy for a couple of years there in 20, you know, the end of like the winter of 2021 and all through 21, it seemed like uh, any car that came to the market, you know, was gone instantly. And, and the next time a new one came, it was more money than the previous one. And it just, you know, we saw the market take a real big spike. Um, and I didn't expect that at all. So I would say, you know, SE's drying up is because there's been uh, a lack of a selection of good value Carreras. And so SE becomes the next best option. Would you agree with that take? I mean, it's always been kind of the next best option, but it's always been just, you know, they just never brought the same money that Carreras and, and G50 cars did. Uh, certainly yeah. not 993s and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I mean, look, f 50 is the new 30, right? It, yeah. When it comes to thousands of dollars, right? Yeah. These, these cars were $30,000 cars. Now they're $50,000 cars for regular ones. Um, yeah. I just... It, 
SCs have appreciated at a higher rate, even despite all the all the money printing and all that other stuff. The the prices that Carreras like G fifty Carreras were bringing before and after the spike, uh, it went up, but the SC rates went way steeper, way faster, way higher because. Right. Even when you do see, I mean, if there's a low mileage G50 Carrera, uh, a yeah. 9,000 mile G50 Carrera, do you think it would bring that much more than this car? Yeah, yeah. I don't Absolutely. know, man. We haven't seen Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. The, look, uh, uh, well, I think we have, and I think I think if this were, even if it were a Targa, if it were a 9,000 mile G50 Targa, I think it'd be a hundred twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollar car. And I mean, we can, this will segue into us doing the numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't think this car is going to bring that much. All right. Well, how much do you think it's going to bring? So our car is sitting at $58,000 and it's going to close very soon here. Basically closes in about a day from this. So, um, I think this car is going to get to $88,000 and I think it'll sell at that number, but I don't think this is going to be a hundred thousand dollar car. Um, if for, if for no other reason, John, they did a poor, these are cell phone photographs and this is a car that deserved it at the very least a photographer with the dslr and you can explain to our viewers what that means um that, that this was poorly brought to market for how special it is and and truly could be from a value standpoint and they they didn't do what it would take to to realize that money um if the photos were better and i mean significantly better i think this car could have stayed a chance to be a hundred thousand dollar car but not the way it's presented here i think um people because it doesn't say nine thousand miles in the listing and when you're scrolling through the thumbs it, it, this just looks like any other sixty thousand to hundred and sixty thousand mile sc and people are just looking at it going forty thousand dollar car fifty thousand dollar car blah 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 nobody's looking at this until they read that it has nine thousand miles and realize just how unique this car is and so i think it's going to fail to meet its potential i'm shocked that this is a dealer ad because you're right the photos aren't that good they really do look um amateurish but I got to say that there's something about that that I kind of like. There's there's an <laughs> honesty to it. I'm serious. I mean, normally I see something <laughs> from so Florida. That's so not the take I thought you were yeah. going to go, yeah. <laughs> you know, you see an ad from a dealer in Florida, and uh -huh. if they're super slick and super polished and, and really well produced, I'm thinking they're covering something up. You yeah. know, I, I don't, I don't believe it. I think they're trying to make, you know, they're, I think they're trying to polish a turd, but this car, <laughs> they just went out and it looks really clean and it looks legit. I mean, I, I hate Florida, uh, for cars. Uh, this is the last place I would buy a car from, but this yeah. one, I, I don't know, man. I, I think it's going to bring the money. I, I agree that, okay. that it is weird that they buried the 9,000 mile thing. You'd think that, yeah. that that would be in the header. Um, I would lead with that every time. Yeah. You know, but you're saying in, you know, that it's only going to bring another 33 grand um, at 88,000. Is that where you said you're going? Yeah. It's at 58. And I think it's going to sell for 88. So I'm thinking there's a 30 grand more. that's going to happen when it closes. Um, but John, it, look, if it did double and go from 60 to 120, that wouldn't surprise me either. But just looking at it, it just feels like a car that could be easily missed. And so I'm just wondering if that's, what's going to happen. So that's where I'm putting my, so I'm putting my staking, my reputation as a nerd on 88,000 on this SC Targa. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to go over? Unlike you, I would be surprised if it doubled and made 120, but I do think it's going to get darn near. Uh, six figures. I don't know if it'll break six figures, but I'll 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 definitely take the over and go ninety on this one and say it probably oh, has some has some room to keep going. Ninety. You go two grand over me after all that brass. Oh, I love this. It's honest. Da, 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 da. Chicken shit. Yeah. Well, I'll be right, and you'll be. <laughs> Well, what will he Second be? Nerd. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think uh, are you in the in the deep camp? Do you think this car doesn't have a chance because it's at an SC, or or are you over where I'm at? Where man, we haven't seen a clean SC with this few miles in a long, long time. Sure. Uh, and maybe it's just because I like the car. I like black 911s, particularly Targas. Um, I would not pay a premium for an SC though. I will tell you that straight up. I, I yeah. will give you my opinion as to what I think will happen with the auction results. 
Um, but that is not something, I don't care how few miles it has. Um, I don't care what kind of money I have in the bank account. Um, I am not paying more than 50 grand John, for an SE. It, I, just John, period. I have a if I that. gave you, if I gave you 90 grand, I would mm-hmm. not expect you to come home with a 9,000 mile SC Targa. I would not expect you to come home. I would expect you to come home with a 160,000 SC Targa and a 964 Cabriolet with 120,000 miles, maybe a C4 cab or something like that. I don't think all that's doable for 90 grand. That's a whole other conversation, but okay. That's 45 a piece. I think you could do it. You're the type of guy that would find one with a high enough miles and and bring home two cars for that money without spending a dime out of your own pocket. That's You'd how have good to you are. dig really hard to find a 964 <laughs> for uh, even a cab with a manual for under 50 grand, but that's a yeah. different most interesting car today's most interesting interesting car is this targa uh now is the time for you guys to plug in your bids uh be a man be (laughs) a real nerd like some of our some of our subscribers are doing it and they're doing it right. family guy not only are they putting their bids in and competing with the nerds Right, they're putting the minute mark that they're putting. Time they're, they're proving their metal, man. These guys, Damn. our nerd herd is so much stronger than you or I, D. What I, these guys yeah. are killing it out there. The herd, most the often herd. Huh? The herd's got game, dude. The herd's got game. The herd's got game. We need to get some of them on here doing the show. We don't know (laughs) what we're talking about. All right, uh, let's find out what happened with this Targa right after this. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, The car only has 65,000 miles. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you got to check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, this car! I am driving a 2020 Lamborghini SVJ. This car, watch this. Oh! 115 mile an hour turn, like, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing, he says. Welcome to the future, everyone. Do you have a Lambo SVJ that you're just like driving so fast in the opposite direction of the axis of the earth that it makes time go backwards? I think that's kind of what our friend Rami was doing. Uh, welcome back to Bid Nerds. Is that, does that explain why he looks so young? Does that guy get Botox or what? He doesn't have any wrinkles. I mean, come on, Rami. I know you're practically my age, but you look like you're my son. Jesus. God, he, uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's just a. Is on point. God drive man, fast cars that, and stay looking young. That's the secret right Robbie, there, I guess. Robbie, that's a that's a really tight close up, man. You're looking good, buddy. Uh, <laughs> get my got Robbie. Get my teeth bleached. Jesus, Robbie looks good. Ugh. So, all right, everyone's sticking around, wanting to know about the results of this eighty two nine eleven. Thanks for being a fan, everyone, and uh, hit the subscribe, like, and notification button if you haven't done it already. I sure like watching the bids from other folks, Michael Deeb. Yeah. I was on there. I commented some more. Um, Ross was out there a lot. Uh, family guy. Ross is the yeah. man, dude. Ross, Ross is from, where's he from? He's it, not Australia. The other, the other place, the, 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 they get all upset. If you say Australia, it's not Australia. T- Tasma- Tasmania or, or New Zealand, New Zealand, right? It's New, New Zealand, Zealand yeah. where they did uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings or whatever. That's where he's right. at. And he's like watching the show regularly from the other Ro- side of the planet. Ross, you the man. Ross, where is Old Zealand, by the way? Because Americans don't know anything about geography. Ha, ha. All right, what happened with this Target 911, Michael Deep? All right, you know, JP, what's the golden rule on this show? If I put out a bid and my partner, the antagonist, takes the over, I know I'm in trouble. And so I, I had high hopes for this triple black SC Targa with, according to the the description super low miles out of pink crest florida so i went eighty eight thousand. my partner took the over and when i heard that i thought oh damn i must have left money on the table 
JP said $90,000 would win this car and bring a trailer. Yahtzee alert. JP, the car sold for $91,000. No, failed to sell on $91,000 on 35 bids. So 91 is where the her, the um, the bring a trailer community petered out on this car. I'm guessing the consigner was looking for 100000 bucks or perhaps more. Uh, it failed to sell. That's kind of surprising. I mean, this car looks like it checks all the boxes. Do you, when you put out 90 grand, is that what you think all the money is? Or do you think that's what was going to happen on this lot? Because I kind of criticized the photographs and then I, it, is this the car? I think you said that you were impressed that the photos were honest. And I was like, come on, man. <laughs> like you just, you take the opposite of everything I say. I feel like we're married. Um, I, I don't know. It's something, something was just a slight bit off on this one. That's why maybe I didn't go the high number at hundred grand. I said 88,000, but, uh, 91 failed to sell. What do you think of that result, man? Kind of confusing, huh? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's an SC. I, a bottom line is uh, people are still, it, it, but so, no miles. there's a stigma on SEs, no matter how, I mean, uh, maybe That's if absurd. it had a hundred miles or 900 miles or something like that. I didn't know it had no miles, but how collectible can a, uh, a 911 <laughs> SCB? I mean, really, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. um, one of, one of 4,000 produced that year. You know, <laughs> Yeah. Of all the 911s, this is the one that is probably the most common and look, we're not knocking SCs. You and I are yeah. regularly talking about how great they are, but yeah. they, part of the reason why they were always considered so great is because they were the one that, you know, was attainable and, and relatively easy to get. And they were the best value for the money. Well, now if you're going to be yeah. spending 90 grand uh, or more, uh, you're going to be wanting a Carrera. You're going to be wanting a G50 car, um, even if it is something like a collector car. I mean, this car, it has super low miles, but not yeah. so low that it couldn't or or wouldn't be driven occasionally. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think somebody should drive this car, um, you know, be damned. And maybe that's why the 91 uh, stopped. It stopped at 91 instead of going to 100 because the next guy who buys this car is probably going to take it even if he just drives it like the, like a Sunday driver to a car show or cars and coffee, somebody's still going to roll past 10,000 miles on this car and maybe keep it for a few years and see 16, 18,000 miles on it and then turn around and sell it. It'll still be absurdly low miles, but this, this car doesn't give off that lawn queen trailered everywhere vibe. It's just not that big of investment. Um, and it's interesting. It's amazing. You and I keep pounding the table for SCs as tremendous values. Um, our good friend, Yuri Sinakis has like, you know, quarter of a million dollar Euro Carrera, and he's looking to trade that car to buy an SC. You know what I mean? That's like, that's like running away from an, uh, a circus to join an orphanage. You know? Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, but okay, you know, let's do his math. I mean, his car is worth a quarter yeah. of a million dollars, um, sure. and he can sell it and get one of the nicest 911 SCs out there uh, and pocket 150 grand. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, that's yeah. what I would do. I, I would to, way rather because the pop- driving, huh? Yeah, I think he wants to pocket two hundred grand. I think he wants to spend fifty grand on an SC, you know. And and that's what I think is the is the way to yeah. go. I mean, you get an SC yeah. that isn't doesn't have nine thousand miles. You get one that has, you know, fifty or n- even ninety thousand miles on an SC yeah. is kind of considered low miles, and that's a car that's yeah. relatively bulletproof. Um, that's where I want to be fifty, fifty five, maybe. Yeah. I wouldn't spend more yeah. than sixty thousand dollars on any, um, excuse me, nine eleven SC. I just wouldn't. I just I, I yeah. can't bring myself to do it. Uh, as much yeah. as I like this car, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course you would because it's worth more <laughs> with the lower miles. But yeah, I, I think you get into a 911 SC because you want the driving experience and you don't feel as bad modding one of these. Um, you certainly <laughs> would feel bad modding this one because it has too few miles. Um, but and, you get one with miles I, and go for it. Yeah. You and Yuri will never fight over a car because he won't drive black and you will. And he wants a gold one and you won't drive gold. So, like, <laughs> the good news is if you guys go shopping together, you'll never fight over the same car. So, uh, anyway, per- should work out perfect. <laughs> Love it. What do you guys think of the results of this $91,000 yeah. bid fail to sell? Uh, is, th- it- is that just crazy? Should someone have just taken that money? 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, that's why I put my bid at 88. It just smelled like this was a sub $100,000 car. But I'm curious to know, what does the herd think the consigner wanted for the car? I mean, we're mm. obviously just guessing and we won't be able to quantify the answer. But I'd love to know. I'm guessing the guy wanted 100 grand. Does somebody think he wanted more? Or did they, do we think we missed the reserve by 4000 bucks at 95 somewhere? Like, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm curious to know. You would think if it came that close to the reserve that the guy would just be like, all right, because where's he yeah. going to get more money for this? You know, I mean, well, and, and it's not worth the $4,000 hassle at this point. Now he's got a listener consignment and pay someone a big, big fee. I mean, what the heck? What are you going to? Well, and here's here's a shortcoming to the BAT, right? Like maybe they sold this car after the auction, but we won't know because they'll not change. They won't update the listing to say that the car sold post sale. It's yeah. just between the consigner and whoever the top bidder was. So this car might have gone. I don't know. But. Based on the result we see, it fell short. So, what do you think they were like? He was looking for or she? Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of bring a trailer, uh, our good friend Bradley Brownell started a new website called Parked on the Block. Have you guys heard of this yet? It's kind yeah. of a throwback to the original bring a trailer before BAT was an auction site. Do you guys remember that? Do you guys have you guys been watching BAT for that long? I mean, BAT has been around for what fifteen years. I mean, it used to be oh. Yeah, a long time. You know, it used to be a vlog. It used to be where, uh, you know, crowdsourced contributed uh, people would go onto the onto the site and 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 say, "Hey, look, I found this weird car on Craigslist in Topeka, Kansas," yep. uh, exactly. and people would talk about it, right? And and there were yeah. no auctions. It wasn't. A, there were no yep. listings. It was just a shared. It was an opportunity for people like to a portal. Yeah, it, yeah. It was like. It's like an That's aggregator. It. Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like basically a place that if you saw something weird and you wanted to spread the word, you'd go to this one place. Um, and that's what they're doing over on Parked on the Block. Because I really miss that about a BAT. I don't begrudge them for having auctions, but. Their categories were countries, right? So if you were looking for a German car, you would click the German category and then you'd get the most, god dang it, you'd get the most uh, um, recent uh German listings, and then if you were looking for an Italian car, or British car, or what have you, that's how they did it. So, um, anyways, pretty pretty funny stuff. But that's how they used to do their thing. So yeah, cool so stuff. go 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 check out parked on the block if you haven't already. You can see uh, we they're sharing bid nerds content up there, and you know you can yeah. comment below all this stuff. It's pretty it's a pretty cool yeah. site. I I, yeah. need, I I have to admit I need to spend some more time over there and check it out because it's, yeah. it's definitely it's a really in cool its idea. In, it's in its infancy. Like it went live not even at the first of the year. It went live like a couple of weeks ago. Um, but uh, I have to say, John, when you called me to tell me that Bradley, who had moved across the country and is in, uh, you know, remember we had had him on the show and he's in yeah. Cleveland now running that museum, the air, it's the plane, train and automobile uh, museum, I think. And uh, he, I was flattered when you told us that he had called you and it's and invited bid nerds to be part of his new project with his buddy. So um, pretty excited to be part of this. I hope it does really well. And, and I think everybody should check it out. We'll definitely be talking about them more in the future. Uh, also yep. wanted to give one more shout out to our good friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas, the classic yep. uh, Porsche dealer, uh, the Thanks, first God. one in the country. So check them out. Their logo is right above Deeb's head. If you want to avoid all the auction hassles and just get the right classic Porsche for you, give them a call and tell them the bid nerds. Did, you did they sell that linen gray Cabriolet yet? I don't know actually it's been yeah. a second since i've talked to them about their inventory every time i go over i try yeah. to avoid going in there because i always want to buy something <laughs> that's true my wallet can't handle it all right guys <laughs> uh thanks for hanging out for another episode we'll see you tomorrow bye no! get those words